Hey guys, today we'll be looking at the Magic 4 68 key keyboard. These are considered budget keyboards and can easily be found for as low as $50 depending on the type of switch that you buy. They are also available in a variety of frame and keycap color. The most common switch variants are Cherry and Kales, and I have two keyboards to show here, a non-backlit version with Kale Browns and a backlit version with Kale Reds. Is $50 a good price for someone to make their first jump into mechanical keyboards? or are they better off spending a little bit more to get something from a more well-known or reputable brand? Let's find out. This keyboard is a 68 key layout, which removes a number pad, the function buttons, as well as two of the control buttons. What you lose in keys, you gain in an extremely compact form factor, which is further compacted through very little of the case extending past where the keys end. This makes this keyboard very easy to fit into a bag for transport. I will talk more about the key layout later in the video. Looking between the backlit and the non-backlit version, the only difference is the larger letter size and translucent keys on the backlit version to allow more light to shine through. The base of the keyboard itself is made from aluminum and I was surprised at how well built it is. There is very little flex to it and there is enough weight to keep it in place when I'm typing. There is no included wrist rest but I feel as though that would take away from the small form factor of the keyboard and I personally found it comfortable to type even without it. There is nothing around the sides except for a small spot for the USB cable at the back. Looking underneath, we find four rubber pads on the base and two collapsible feet which are also rubberized. One problem I found with these feet is that they're fairly difficult to pop out with a finger, and I found myself having to find something to pop them out such as a screwdriver. But after several times of opening and closing them, they got less stiff and I was finally able to open them without any tools. This keyboard connects via a removable USB mini connection, which is very nice to see, and there is an included matching USB cable in the box. On the backlit version, there is also a dip switch selector, which will change the functions of some of the keys, as well as disable the Windows button. One of the changes that I made was flipping switch 2, which switches the Windows button and function button in order to prevent accidentally pressing the Windows button while in a game. This is a really great function, but I wonder why this isn't on the non-backlit version. Would have been nice to have it on both. Moving on to the front side of the keyboard, let's talk about the layout. As I said before, this is a 68 key layout, but even though you're missing quite a few number of keys, like many other compact keyboards, the missing keys are accessible through use of the function button. For example, the function button plus the numbers will give you access to the function buttons F1 through F12. Function plus page up and down will give you the home and end buttons, which were the missing control buttons that we had. They also include shortcuts to media control, calculator, menu, as well as print screen, scroll lock, and pause. The backlit version also includes a few more options. The first is a key speed adjustment, which adjusts the repeat rate of the keyboard. There is also a button on Q which will switch the escape and tilde buttons. Like the dip switches, why these buttons are missing on the non-backlit version, I'm not 100% sure, and it would have been nice to see them on both. I'm not really sure if this is the case with all backlit or non-backlit models, or if it's just the version that I bought, so make sure to double check before you buy. The other function buttons on the backlit version are the controls to control the light settings which are found on the arrow keys. This keyboard has two lighting modes. Up and down will adjust a solid backlight with up to 9 levels of illumination including off. Left and right will control a breathing mode and includes three rates of breathing, slow, medium, and fast. These keyboards are also available in a variety of switches. The ones that I went for are Kale Reds on the backlit and Kale Browns on the non-backlit. Kale switches usually follow cherry switches in their naming scheme for switch types, whether linear, tactile, or clicky, but there can be variances in properties such as weight. The Kale Reds are a linear switch similar to the Cherry Reds, requiring 2mm to actuate and 4mm to bottom out. The Kales, however, require 50 grams of force to actuate compared to the Cherries, which require 45, so they're just slightly heavier. The Kale Browns are a tactile switch compared to the Cherry Browns. They do, however, require 60 grams of actuation force compared to the Cherry Browns, which only require 45. This is a fairly large difference, which is definitely noticeable when typing. And finally, here's a typing test on both of these keyboards using the H5 zoom placed about one foot away.
So it's really hard to do a conclusion on the keyboard since it's really different strokes for different folks, and the best keyboard is the one that feels best for you. But if my thoughts carry any weight to them whatsoever, these keyboards are amazing for the price, and they were a great introduction into mechanical keyboards without investing over $100. They're built incredibly well, and kill switches do feel better than what other people might say. But if you do want a Cherry variant, those are available, albeit with a higher price tag. The USB cable is also detachable, which is great to see. You also need to consider the pros and cons of a smaller size keyboard. While it's really great for transporting and having your mouse and keyboard closer together, you are still missing the functionality of a numpad and the F keys. If you are going to be using this for gaming, which I do, having to press the function button to access the F keys to do things such as quick save and quick load in certain games can get a little tedious at times. But for typing, I absolutely love the Kale Browns. They have a great weight for my fingers and a good tactile bump without being too loud. The only real downside that I had was the missing features on the non-backlit model, which would have been really helpful to have, things such as the dip switch and the repeat rate. I would have liked them, but for some people, might not even be a problem. And that wraps it up for my review of the Magic Force keyboard with Kale Brown and Red Switches. I will try to start updating as much as I can, so please subscribe and tune in for my next video review. Until next time, take care.